but we take kind of a long view of things. You know, we, we have our pathways and, you know, VLDL is a triglyceride rich particle that comes out of the liver. It gets acted on by lipoprotein lipase. The triglyceride is hydrolyzed and used for energy. The particle shrinks in size into an LDL class particle, which is then subsequently cleared. And that's kind of what we all know. Working around the edges of that, though, is the idea, well, how rapidly can you increase VLDL production? And how rapidly can you increase lipoprotein lipase activity? And if you could increase lipoprotein lipase activity a lot, could you rapidly deplete VLDL particles in such a way that you're now left with a boatload of LDL particles in a faster time frame than you would have expected, and now your body has to do something with it? And that's something that's called clearance. So how do we clear LDL particles through LDL receptors? An LDL receptor binds a particle, pulls it out of the blood, goes back and does it again. All right, that's the process. Well, can you overwhelm that process? Can you, can you have so many particles that these receptors aren't keeping up? Yes, you, you can do that. Uh, but the common model we have is that the receptor gets uh, injured or is in some way not functional as it should be, and we end up clearing poorly. So the model we have in our, in our you know, working lexicon is FH, where people have an LDL receptor axis disorder of any number of types, 2,000 different you know, defects and counting. And at the end of the day, I just can't bind and clear particles very well. So my problem is a lack of sufficiently functional LDL receptors in a number that could keep up with my needs. So that's what we think of as LDL receptors that either don't work well, low in number, or both. Well, that's not this. This is something else. This is lots of LDL particles. We haven't necessarily done anything to the LDL receptor and, and left to our imagination, well, what else could be going on that might influence LDL levels outside of just VLDL? And, and this gets into a lot of what ifs that I don't have the data for. But just what ifs, you know, what if um, in the process of taking lots of energy in the form of fats into our cells, we were to downregulate LDL receptors? There is a little bit of data for that with saturated fat, but not for necessarily total fat or others. But there are models out there where you can downregulate LDL receptors in certain ways. Okay, so maybe that's downregulated. Maybe we're increasing cholesterol absorption from our gut. We're a hyperabsorber. And because we're absorbing many more sterols, we are overwhelming basically the ability of, of the system to maintain an adequate LDL response. Because we know that if we decrease cholesterol absorption, we increase the number of LDL receptors. Uh, the converse is if I increase lots of absorption, I can downregulate LDL receptors. So maybe that's part of it. Um, maybe it's just my LDL. LDL receptors, unless somebody comes along to give me a hand, are not going to keep up because we're just overwhelming them with, with substrate and, and VLDL-derived LDL particles. All of these are possibilities. And, and the reason I raise it is that, uh, you know, Nick's response to statins wasn't so great. A 30% response to resuvastatin 20 milligrams isn't really the norm. It's a little less than you would expect. Now, that could just be Nick's physiology. That could be some other process that's affecting uh, LDL receptors, just a thought. Or maybe it's just the fact, no, you, you just can't keep up. Your, your receptors are trying as best they can, but we have now overwhelmed them. There, there are so many particles being produced that the production axis is actually driving the LDL, and um, it, it's less about the receptor, more about the production. So all of those things are elements that we have yet to figure out. You're explaining a, a crucial component to the lipid energy model that there's actually a net increase of triglycerides leaving the liver on purpose. That there's a more that there's a higher recirculation, which can explain why there's more of the of the VLDL that carries it, and alongside, coupled with the faster turnover, resulting in the higher low density lipoproteins and therefore the higher LDL cholesterol. The higher triglyceride export again we only typically see in populations that tend to have a greater level of illness because they have more uh, de novo lipogenesis. They're literally, their livers are overproducing. Whereas in this case, we're positing that there's more recirculating of existing fatty acids to power somebody who is not only 
um, not only metabolically healthy, but is typically leaner and might have a reason to be exporting them at a faster and faster rate. And that's what we think is happening with Nick. That's what we think is happening with many of us who have the triad, such that when we do something like what Nick is doing or something like I was doing, we actually see this pronounced changed that quickly.